everyone and welcome to today's conversation of we're di diverting into conversations of things women do to get out of a guilt situation. So it would be somebody who cheated on you and then they want to get out of what they've done and so they use tactics to make them look innocent when they're 100% guilty. So women specifically will cry, but they'll feel such a depletion of I failed because I got caught, not because they actually feel guilt. Although you'll think they feel guilty, which will be a tactic for them to try to get you to forgive them. This is the modern day influencer we're talking about. Although there are women, you can tell by the way somebody acts if they're like an air and water focused person, this is how they operate. They don't care about real efforts to make changes in people's lives. They live in pie in the sky because pie in the sky for them has gotten them through whatever they've had to get through, which is really basically not getting their way. So these people are the people that are attractive. They have what you would call charisma, although it's not charisma. It's weird to me because I've never been attracted to people who were like this, but some of you fall for it and then they weasel their way out of trouble by being abusive to people. And then when the people call them out on the abuse, they say, I didn't do that. Or if they say, oh, you're right. Oh, and then you forgive them and move on. It's what we're watching with Gary Vaynerchuk's content. It's, for example, the Miami episode where Mo Mona Van posted uh, a New Year's argument and she said, well, we'll just work it out. Because she purposely is intentionally posting content to abuse the audience. Another way they try to abuse their audience is if they feel... If they feel like they're not getting enough attention, they'll do things to draw in attention. And they'll say, I'm just living my life. So anything Mona Van posts is an example of somebody who is literally a psychopath, who is hurting an audience and never delivering on any form of substance. And she's hanging out with the Huffington Post lady, who is a, the Huffington Post is a gossip columnist. It's a gossip column on the internet. She's not up to shit. But you all think she is because she has the network fueling her because somehow her content went viral, but that's because she was abusing people. So that type of person gives herself excuses in her head of, well, it's just the business. And then she continues down her path as people give her collaborative deals. Reminding you that she's not from America. So they'll give you just enough, like she, and at VCon last year, I believe she was talking about how she was divorced. Little mini things to, to make you think that she's relatable. But she doesn't care about none of that stuff. She just wants the worship of an audience. Doesn't make sense to you now, but when you become what you think you want to become, it's easy to be a sellout because none of you have ethics and morals at this level. You literally actually would be willing to sell yourselves to the devil. They command you to do it. You go on people's podcasts to do nasty con content. They tell you how to behave. So the Huffington Post lady says things in a negative tone that sounds positive and then directly says negative things to you, but she's disempowered in her experience of life. So you do those things because she told you to while you sit in front of her as she farts out information. So they would, they'll be talking about, they'll be talking about making fancy clean eat meals, but it's not actually about the clean eat meal. It's about I'm rich and you're poor. And they want you to say, wow, she's intelligent because she said the word hexane. Nobody really knows what a hexane is, but now she said a word hexane that you don't know. So now you think she's smart. It's like subtlety, things like that. Meanwhile, she gets the table of women around her 
to tell her, wow, oh yeah, that's interesting, that's interesting, that's interesting, that's interesting, it's not interesting. It's painful to watch. It's painful to see. It's painful to experience. And you would never want to sit around that table and listen to that shit. It's boring as shit. But they make it look really fancy, really elegant. The angles, the, the formula that they've created to try to make you feel a certain way as Democrats. It's all about fueling on your emotions. The guy posting thing is to make you feel jealous of them while they feel happy about it. And the men participate in it because they have no self-awareness that they're hurting millions of people and they don't care about that. Whether you're Adam Levine on a red carpet, it's inappropriate. It's called, they don't know how to be professional. None of these influencers know how to be professional. They think they're just getting attention from you as an audience. That means they don't have talent. So if they're fueling off of kissing someone, they don't have real talent. But that fuels you as audience, as women. So now you take women as, as we've evolved ourselves into cooperative business, what used to be business leadership, to now prostitutes with no education who bully other women, and it gets worse. They're even talking about letting a young CEO take over big companies to abuse other generations because they want to grow really fast. Gary Vee even said that he's about to put a woman on a reality TV show for being a CEO of some stupid company so that he can fuel her career and show young millennials how to behave as CEOs. And it is going to be nothing more than drama, bullshit, script, and horrific experiences to watch. So basically what these women do is they bully. It's like worse than bullying. It's like conviction in bad behavior. Control. There are multi-dimensional aspects of a lot of different ways to think about things. But these people are trending in one dimensional existence to cut off creativity while they call creativity wearing fancy outfits and sucking face with a dude in a white background while they glorify themselves by saying little things like Gary Vee walked up to me and he said, you guys are spending so much time together tonight. Nobody wants to talk to you. She said, well, well I didn't really want to network. I wanted to catch up with my best friend. And then Melissa Toper Burger, whatever the hell her name is, validates it. And then you all think they're best buds. But they can't stand each other. They just want to get into the party and they need somebody to hang out with. Then you have your, the men surrounding these people validating them, holding their hand, and then giving them, per giving them permission to behave like this. Gary V gives her permission to behave like that. Every woman looks for validation as if I'm look, am I doing this right? And every man, if you're a prostitute bitch, so the man says, well, yeah, that's fucking hot as shit. I agree to that behavior. And so it gets in a tumbleweed. We're watching women leave parties with men. That's the validation. That's what they're looking for. They didn't talk about anything. They gave them a fart stench of seduction. The worst kind of content a woman can can create with a man is implicative, especially if you're like supposed to be in some real relationship. So you don't share about your personal life, yet it's all over your platforms. Then you talk in provocative ways to hurt people purposely, but that's the energy that they're chasing.
They don't have feeling around it. They actually make the person who feels sad and upset, they actually make them wrong for feeling it. And then they gloat and figure out new ways to get her to feel bad again because that makes them feel like they're winning. Because they get a new brand deal off of it. Just like she got invited to the Netflix red carpet. So she's over there glorifying herself. Gary Vee's holding her hand and they're acting like they're kings and queens. And audience members and people like myself are crying their eyes out, but they don't have any opinion or feeling on it to where he then goes onto his platform and says FOMO. Don't have FOMO. The sadistic creation of that piece of content should get you to understand that that is fucked up. This is because we're dealing with sadistic personality, narcissistic personality disorder. I don't have FOMO for a yacht or a jet or clothes or hair or makeup. You're creating FOMO. You purposely, intentionally created the FOMO. It doesn't surround it off of stuff, which is what she's trying to portray it off. So she's trying to, these people, these women are trying to create FOMO. It's not actually that you're jealous of the woman in the fancy hotel. You're not even really jealous of the dude. This is what they don't understand. They're jealous of the idea of it. They want something similar, but they want something of love and substance. In the real world, that's what you want. See, the, the old days is movies used to give you the inspiration of possibility that you too could be the woman that Tom Cruise said, you had me at hello. But they turn that into rotten behavior that it's money focused. See, Tom Cruise in that movie was money focused. But the storyline of the movie was that Tom Cruise turned himself into a man who loved a woman because he realized that love wasn't more important, which is why he wrote the memo. And there was an evolution of a character into the evolution of two characters being in a relationship together. Of course, we all know Renee Zellweger is psychotic and she doesn't know a role in a movie versus real life, which is the problem that we're having with television influence. See, influence actually affects what these actresses are now doing. They're not professional. They can't look at a co-star and know that they can be friends and then act in a love scene and then turn that shit off and know that it's just a movie because they don't really actually know each other that well. But that seduction tactic of what these people in the movies are do did to us, which was a controlled environment by a director and seasoned actors like Tom Cruise to hold the space, is now becoming a prostitute from Persia who's looking to fuel her bank account and overthrow relationships so that she can look good on camera. Although in her mind, she looks good on camera. And in my mind, she looks like a piece of shit. But nobody else seems to want to say anything of truth in association to. He flies her to Beverly Hills instead. And the fact that you as an audience don't see anything wrong with that is a concern. That's called FOMO creation. The other problem is, is these men are supposed to be uh, high-end business who have 2,000 employees. So his, uh, his social media and the way he's behaving affects 2,000 people who work in marketing and that's millions of people who are viewing it. So this Persian bitch is violently abusing me. Purposely. 
That energy is on Gary V. And then he's the leader of 2,000 people globally. And those 2,000 people are affected by the way those two people interact, whether you like it or not. And then they go off and make marketing campaigns to abuse us as a society. And then they recreate the new norms of society into Persian living. And they still have no emotion attached to it. The problem the disconnect is you don't care about people. You care about agendas. You know, the conversation around abortion and all these other bullshit equality shit, it's just made up. They made that shit up to make you uncomfortable. It's called you don't like judgment. It's called you don't want to do the actual work that it would take. Because the women prior to us have already taken care of this. We're not in oppression. Black people, all you people, we're not in oppression. You made this shit up. Because you didn't have anything to stand for except for a prostitute in a, in a bikini top at a white party. See, the hijab wearing women out of Iran moved into this country, they, or in California and other parts of this country, and used our independence against us to try to overthrow the 4th of July, which is what Mona Van tried to do. Where she then seductively shows a diamond ring and holds a watermelon drink to let us know that she's a Palestinian supporter. So that's also known as weak leadership. That's a terrorist move. She was just at the White House, the U.S. Capitol, working with Americans who are supporting this woman. Supporting her so that she can sit over there and say, well, whatever you need. You do the work. I'm a doctor, supposedly. Doesn't have the intelligence of a doctor. Doesn't talk like a doctor. Doesn't show that she was a doctor because she's always in L.A., doesn't know anything about pharmacy, but this is a new norm of influence is where I'm going with this. So Gary Vee promotes her as if she's up to the real shit. Says, says, goes around to parties and says she's a pharmacist, holds her hand, takes her to VCon, and then all of you at VCon feel how wonderful she is. Well, she was so sweet. Persian, Persian, Egyptian, uh, Puerto Rican, or whatever the fuck the desperate housewife lady is. Meanwhile, they're all arguing within the cult and they call that business professional. Meanwhile, you as audience are trying to get your shit together so you can have a small business, enjoy your life, but they don't want you enjoying your life. They want to be the center of attention. They want to be the sexiest woman alive. They want to be in a movie. They want to destroy your lives so that Gary Vee gives them kudos. Not because they like Gary Vee. No, because he's got 44 million people and a strength about him that they want to steal for themselves because they actually want to be the one who gets the friendly smile and the flirtations from Gary Vee. And he gives it to them. on camera, Gary Vee. Meaning you can't have a real business conversation with these people and then they've closed off the door, which he says they didn't, but they have. So that they can thrive and abuse us as, as an audience. You can work your ass off all you fucking want. You can make a hundred pieces of content per day. That shit ain't going viral. Because the algorithm is fucking rigged. You have developed people's mind to not be interested in anything more than shallow FOMO existence. And that's a big concern because in the old days, we used to be interested in education. But the more you speak to don't go to college, the less people go to college.
Too bad if you have to pay off your student loans. Meanwhile, we have doctors sitting on mountaintops. No, they probably actually went to school. However, they're shallow as shit and they're acting and behaving just like the other prostitutes. So now as an old person, I have to go into an office and look at a plastic surgery face that has no compassion, no empathy, no ethics. And that's the future of medical. While Biden speaks to affordable care, while she tries to get more Botox done, they're all depleting us of our ability to have energy because they can't sustain their platforms. Mona Van can't sustain her platform, so she has to have a man to help her sustain it. She only produces maybe one piece of content every two to three days, but that's all she can do. So yesterday and today, I battled your asses and I blew your shit up all over the fucking internet to bring how people really feel about Mona Van and Gary V together. Because she wants you to think that everyone supports that shit. But you're all inside angry as fuck, yet there he goes again with another fucking photo session and an invitation to speak and educate you at VCon with a bunch of people who have nothing to fucking say. Nor do they have any desire to learn from people who actually have something to teach. See, they all accidentally went viral because they were all in network with each other. It's called Ponzi scheme. Marie Forleo is a fucking Ponzi scheme. Nicole Lapin is a Ponzi scheme. She doesn't teach shit. So they all rely on one person alone, Gary Vaynerchuk, to push you as an audience to produce content to where you then become another Nicole Lapin. Take a look at who you have speaking on platform at VCon 2024. It's fucking shit. Low level, no education. Last year was shit. You don't know what you're fucking talking about. You don't know how to have a 30 minute conversation. You're making shit up. You don't really know about business because you're just the face of the business. You hire a team, you have a team of people. You never had conversations like this before. So how the fuck are you supposed to teach us about business is my fucking question. Woohoo, cry, vulnerabilities. Then Gary parades himself around like he's a fucking king. Where's your, your crown, Gary V? As you hold her fucking hand. Oh, look at her. And then you take photos together where you post it on the table at your engagement party in Canada. And you're going to tell us how to run a business? While you try to make us vulnerable to accept that shit? Sorry. You keep that shit over there with you. I don't want to be a part of that. People should be showing up to VCon 2024 to actually learn something. But what they really want is they're going to try to find connections from these people. But I'm going to tell you right now, you're not going to find any connections there. Gary's going to go on platform and he'll say, uh, friends, acquaintances, friends to family. Strangers, acquaintances, friends to family. So you really think Jessica Alba is going to be your friend? You think she's going to treat you like family? Now that's just her brand and image. So that is a, another form of how a setup works to get you to fail. Then Jessica Alba is going to take your idea that you ran by her. She's going to use it. And then she's going to sell product with it. And then say, I don't know that. I don't know what you're talking about. And then you're going to be just like the guy who says Kim Kardashian uh, ruined my life. Meanwhile, Jessica Alba is going to sit on stage and tell you that it's not going to be easy. 
So tell me, Jessica Alba, how are we going to grow in business? Well, I'll tell you this. It's just not going to be easy. Oh, really? Thanks. And then I'm going to do some copycat shit that I really didn't do. I just actually had someone come up to me and say, hey, I got this brand. Do you want to be part of it? You should be the face. I'll do the rest. And now Gary Vee's got her on a platform talking about business. Then we've got dumbass Drew Barrymore waving. Like, these people think that they're waving at fans. Your students. See, they don't think, like, Drew Barrymore in her mind doesn't see you ever winning. She sees you staying low in low game. Commanding you to uh, 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 applaud her for how much hard work she's put in. You don't remember the old Drew Barrymore, do you, some of you, where she was a drug addict and she was flashing some of these talk shows and where she's been married like three or four times and how she was on the cover of a magazine and how her mom used to take her to Hollywood parties where she would get wasted when she was only like 10. Now she's acting like a fucking Fruit Loop and some weird, some weird personality that she made up. It's her talk show personality. She's not authentically herself. Yeah, she's teaching you authenticity. They don't talk to you like they're authentic. Nobody on LinkedIn talks to you like they're authentic. They talk to you like you're snake oil salesman. You fall for it, though. And then you act just like him. And then he runs around, Gary Vee, and he says, be kind. So he tells the good people who are already nice, tells them to be kind. And then the bad guys use be kind as a weapon against those of you who are kind. So what would that look like? That would look like Mona Vand is a total fucking bitch, but she can pretend to be sweet. So she's maliciously posting content. Maliciously. To you as audience. And I, she knows damn well that I get fucking furious to where I want to fucking stab her in the fucking face. So Gary Vee then comes with, be kind. Don't protect yourself. You're the problem is the message. You're raining on my parade while she's over there being malicious. But that's not how wor the world works. That's how we end up with prostitutes all over the internet. Do you understand? That's how we end up with prostitutes all over the internet. So he's made a web of destruction in the form of diabolical bitch asses who are in the lead, literally in the lead. Why are they in the lead? They get seen by the most people. They have the most followers and fans that he created. They're making the most money and the most brand deals. He's telling you the low class to be kind and he's telling them to be kind, but he's, they're using it as a weapon against you to keep and hold you down while you stand in front of Gary Vee and get an autograph and cry your eyes out because it's been a fucking rough ass fucking year. That's a vulnerability. Now they're going to use it against you. That's not business to use it against you, the part, that part. That's not compassion. That's not empathy, is it? But somebody saw that and may have gone up to you and, and wanted to do a business deal or something with you. Because now you're in a viral piece of content with Gary Vee. But now they know your weakness. And nobody should have to worry about that. That's called tearing down someone's uh, building. That's the kind of conversation we have when we talk about tearing someone's building down. Yet, this is how these people operate in business. Because in their minds, they're so talentless. They have no talent. They're not relatable. But they're going to invent ways to be relatable because they want the money and the fame. That would be Kendall Jenner and everything she fucking posts. 
I'll even have a kid so that I can stay relevant. I'll hire a surrogate so that I can stay relevant. Those are my children. That's Phoenix in London, by the way. So she's erotically, this is another part. She's erotically showing you a parenting skill that is completely sadistic. She's licking all over Phoenix. Phoenix is pushing her away. She's, he's like, ew. And then she laughs about it. And in the comment section, you say, what a great vision to watch a mother take care of her son. That's how mentally ill you all are with women like that. The next video she posts is herself at a club at a DJ booth. But she literally just bounces around and somebody else mixes the music. That's not real living, folks. That, that loses an opportunity for you to make a living when you're the talent. And she's garbage. No one likes her. But she manifested it that she was iconic. She's const constantly saying iconic, iconic. You're not iconic. Icon, I see. Then we want to take a look at London, who is adorably cute and definitely pure of heart, as she is my child. I taught her a lot of different things, by the way. Anyway, don't, don't try to put me in a good mood, Phoenix. I mean, London. <laughs> when does she hold that child? When does she hold that child? Thank God she doesn't. But that's not the point we're talking about. She's supposed to be the mother. But she doesn't act like the mother. Yet you're still praising her as if she is the mother. So what am I telling you about these women? They lie out their fucking asses. And you as industry and you as Gary V agree to the behavior. You liking, commenting, and doing a stage conversation is you agreeing to the behavior. There's no way in fucking hell, unless I was going to call that bitch out, would I ever do any fucking work with these women. These women aren't an atrocity to society, but for some reason, you can't put two and two together that these people are horrific because somehow they have millions of views. No, nothing interesting. They're weird as shit. Their backdrops are dead. They're death to the planet. They're robbing you of success. They're all Democrats. They're using it as subliminal messages, as a collective trend to gear you into believing that trannies are normal, that abortion should be legal. I mean, legal in the sense that you could be nine months pregnant and have an abortion just because. That's called murder. That's so that when Paris Hilton decides to be nine months pregnant, that she can get off without having any criminal acts. That's how Democrats favor for favor each other. Then they're bringing in these influencers into the White House to act sophisticated and then getting wasted at Khloe Kardashian's party where Chloe's twerking and Kim Kardashian's getting flipped and they're trying to make it act as if that's normal for a politician. That's not what we need in charge. We need somebody who's very straight laced and doesn't party like she's 20 years old. But I'm not sure what part of that you don't get because you don't want to follow any law and order because you're the bad guys. See, now they'll come up with excuse after excuse after excuse how they're the victim, how they're the, they're the ones that are being abused, and, but they're the ones that are abusing you, which makes you angry, and then you react to their abuse because they're not real leaders. It's like listening to Kamala Harris tell you that Donald Trump is going to weaponize the justice system, but the Republicans... We've told you that they've weaponized the, the system. It's proof. It's proof in the Donald Trump trials of 
ignorance. And then he hypothetically spoke and he spoke in a way that was like, I'm not going to use it as a, as a, as a, a weapon. Why would I do that? I need to get my country back in order because he has priorities. And then Kamala Harris uses it as a run train of, he's a dictator. Where the fuck did that come from? He said in a conversation that on the first day, I am going to be a dictator because we're closing the fucking border down. What part of that as American people did you not hear that Donald Trump wants to protect your property? Donald Trump wants to protect you from people who are criminals like Monavand. Only people who are benefiting from trafficking would not accept that as a conversation that was for your existence. Only bad people would call Donald Trump a dictator. Only bad people would want the border open. But that's what the, the media is focusing on. They're twisting words and taking their fingers up your asshole and spinning you around and creating complete unrest. And it's just fucking cruel. And they're all in it together. So it's the media, it's influencers, it's Hollywood, and it's politicians. And it's a global concern. And the criminals are loving it. The rest of you are blindsided by it. And then nobody wants to be or speak up because you're in a fear-based society. But Mona Man's at the top, showing up to VCon. Because that's where they always want to take the, the attention to a Persian Middle Eastern whore that works for who? Joe Biden. She works for Joe Biden. She showed up at the White House. What part of that don't you fucking get? She then has a fucking clean eat party where she invites Bobby Brown, a makeup artist who has a makeup line where she bullshits her about clean eat and Bobby Brown can see right through her fucking shit. She didn't want to do a brand deal with that bitch. That Bobby Brown has been in the fucking industry for a really long time. Reminding you that she was at VCon 2023. So not only do we have individuals who have potential to create education. We have individuals who are being suppressed when they're in the, in the top tier of what the education could be. So I'm going to give Bobby Brown a little mini credit and then I'm going I'm to shoot your ass away and tell, tell you that Bobby Brown has a lot of education to deliver to an audience. She's been around the block in the sense that she's been around in the business for a really long time. She is a real business professional. She's worked with some of the worst clients. Yeah, she's being suppressed in the form of education and what she's able to do, even though she's a network, because of Democrats, because of Motivand. So now Motivand's at the top tier because Gary V is her love interest. And that makes it acceptable for her to do business with that one. Because that's the future of business now that we're dealing with the Middle East. Because the Middle East people, they don't live in a free country, but they are in our country taking advantage of our freedom for themselves. She's Persian, not American. When your platform says you're Persian, you're not American. When you act like the way she acts, you're not a fucking American. She's not from L.A. That's not an L.A. personality, by the way. She just thinks that she's tapped into the energy, but she's a total fucking fraud. Kim Kardashian doesn't even know the fucking energy. And then we've got all these fucking bitches from other parts of the country, like Charlie D'Amelio moving to L.A. to try to tap into the energy. Bitch hasn't changed since she was 14 years old. She still whispers like this. <laughs> I'm so intelligent. That's another way they get you. They try to convince you how smart they are. Well, me and Gary went to this thing. Me and Gary did this. Gary said this. 
and he just smiles. And you're gonna tell me that you wanna expect me to support you? You expect me to support you after what you fucking produce. So you go to Beverly Hills, you go to all the fancy fucking parties, and you take her along for the ride. You don't have a fucking clue what it's like over here for me. No, you don't have a clue what it's like for me over here. You don't give a fuck. All it would take for my shit to go viral and expose these bitches, you have enough fucking information. Yeah, you don't want to give it up because you like this kind of shit and you say it in your fucking videos. And there are no repercussions for these bitches' antics and all you men do is rub their asses Tell us how happy you all are and abuse the fuck out of all of us. You abuse people, all of you. The sad part is, is that you can't recognize that you abuse people. You're supposed to be the men who protect us from people like that. Yet women have overthrown you because you decided to pose for photography and shit. So now you've downgraded women to where you're going to go to war and they're going to live off your money. And that's exactly what their plan was to become lesbians because that's actually what they all are. That's why she's always wearing white. That's fucking disgusting. They literally look at other women and get their vaginas wet. They don't get their vaginas wet off of men anymore. Mona Van is a fucking lesbian. You think that I get pissed off at the fact that Gary does that shit? I get pissed off at the fact of his words don't match his fucking actions and that he's living unethically and immorally. That's what I'm fucking pissed off about. That your words are not true to what is actually going on and the fact that my shit is still not fucking viral. Meaning you're living off of the ideologies of prostitutes and fucking dumb asses and shallow sadistic bitches like your wife, Ashton Kutcher. You think I'm pissed off that you're actually married to someone else? No, I'm pissed off that you fucking sold out. And that goes for all of you fuckers. That you decided to promote someone that was evil and sadistic. Which means you're a sellout. And then you fucked us over in movies. Because no movie that comes out of the movie hall is worth a shit. Like, how many more remakes are we going to have to watch, Twister? Go invent a new movie called Tornado. You can't come up with your own storyline because you have no creative outlet because you're too busy to get your dick sucked. And that's a woman's fault. So there's so much noise in this industry of women in fucking nasty bikinis. They have no creative. They just lounge. Lazy, I'm having such a hard time expressing this to you. When you're around people that are hardworking, you're hardworking. When you're around dead weight like Motivan, everybody's dead weight. So you're going to show up at VCon and you'll be surrounded by dead weight. That's everybody on the stage. 
Their goal is to gonna be to get you to not produce content. Because if you produce content and you win, although we know the Hukta girl is our new, our new inspiration, you're fucking kidding me. This has never been seen before in history of how fucking ridiculous this all is. She has nothing to fucking offer. She's fucking trailer park trash. She's the girl that can't stand up at the bar because she's blacked out drunk. And that's who's teaching the youth because she went hot tall. And she's a woman. That means she's fucking gross. It's like the girl with no tooth. And now y'all think she's hot. And let's not forget about Alex Earl and her prostitution ring as she just posted a video about Braxton buying her roses. I guess he blew up with her, up, up at her because he's having a hard time tolerating her ass anymore. I don't know how you fucking are next to these people because that makes you unlikable. It's like the buzzkill enters the room when Alex Earl arrives. Having a nice conversation, la 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 la. And then Alex Earl arrives. And then she has to be the center of attention, but all she wants to talk about is hair and makeup. So we're all over here talking business, me, Gary, and Braxton. We're, well, you know, this is what you should do. And what do you think about this? We're having a real conversation. And then a bitch shows up. And then she wants to show titties and pussy and take the attention onto her so that Braxton fails. Because you better believe if they ever break up, Alex Earl is going to throw his ass in the dirt, just like the rest of them. To say that he cheated, say this and that, and then when he shows up with another girl, it's going to be drama, because we haven't even got to that point yet. But you want to know that these people are tired of the men already. Mona Man just wants to get her meal ticket, her money, her half of whatever he has, which I built. So you sit over there and think about that for a minute, Gary Vee, with all this fucking work for the last seven years that I've put in and take a look at how you're using my money to travel the globe with another woman and you have the fucking balls to buy her clothes, kiss her on the face, and then expect me to just be okay with it. While you imply that you're staying in the same house together and the same home and the same bed while she wears a diamond ring and brags about it while you teach about humility and kindness and caring and all the other bullshit that you spout out while we have to sit there and watch her lounge in a white room make out with her father eat clean parties where she's violently violating the American people and then there's no repercussions for it because she's just one of other millions of women or thousands of women who are doing the exact same thing while the government supports that shit. That's called cruel and unusual punishment. And that's illegal. Yet yeah, there's no repercussions. Yeah, there you go again. I'll go look. I'm going to go look at your fucking um, Instagram page and you'll have another fucking photo where you're fucking each other on camera because that's how you roll. Babe. Oh, babe. This is my love. It's all over your fucking Instagram account, Gary V. It's all over the fucking YouTube channel too. So today was about showing you what it felt like again. So you don't forget what you fucking did to me because what you're feeling is only a mild case of pain of what you put me through. So that you can look cool on a fucking platform while your goddamn V-Con holders act like fucking buffoons. Knowing they're not going to win this fucking game because the bitch is on the fucking main stage, not them.